I'm Michelle McDonald and I'm going to start by welcoming you to the mysterious world of bone and I'm speaking about part one, what is bone or more specifically what I'm going to be speaking to you about is what is inside bone. So this is a 3D image of a femur which is the long bone that's at the top part of your leg and when we look more closely at the distal part of the femur, so this is the part here at the top of your knee joint, and when we cut into this tissue that we've scanned with a CT scan and look inside the tissue, we start to see the structures that exist inside bone, which is something that Mike will be speaking to shortly. But what I'm going to talk to you about is what's actually inside the black empty space. This is not an inert tissue, it's not doing, any, doing nothing, it's actually doing an awful lot, and that's because there's a lot of cells that live inside this tissue, and I'm going to talk to you about that and show you what we're learning about these cells. So that is in this area here, hopefully you can see this arrow down the bottom here in this red box, we look at this bone surface here and we're starting to learn and learning a lot more about the cells that live in this black space here. So this is a schematic to, to demonstrate to you that surface of the tissue that I was just talking about. Along the bottom here, shown in blue, is the bone tissue and what I'm going to show you now is all of the cells that live inside this bone tissue. Firstly we have the osteocytes and osteocytes are cells that are embedded inside the bone matrix and they sit inside this bone matrix and control how the tissue or how bone responds to load, which is something that Mike will speak to more shortly. We also have these surfaces on the bone that are undergoing remodeling. And remodeling means the tissue is being turned over or it's being replaced because our bone tissue needs to maintain its strength and in order to do that, if there's any damage to that bone, we need to repair it and we need to turn it over. And this is taken place by osteoclasts and these are bone resorbing cells. These cells resorb or eat away at our bone tissue when they've been given signals that they need to, to turn over the tissue. And then following on from this, we have osteoblasts that lay down new bone tissue that are shown here in purple. So these cells are coupled together and this is an organised uh, process to make, make sure we maintain our skeletal mass and integrity. Now this is only occurring on about 20% of our bone surfaces at any one time. The rest of our surfaces are sitting in a quiescent state and they're lined by these bone lining cells. The bone marrow space inside the bone is an incredibly vascular space. There's lots of blood vessels in here and this is important obviously to deliver nutrients and oxygen to our bone cells. But it's also an avenue for our immune cells to come into and out of the bone, uh, bone marrow environment because the bone marrow environment is a very important reservoir for our immune cells. And what we also have in the bone tissue are adipocytes in the bone marrow space which are fat cells. But what I'm going to be focusing on today is what we're starting to learn now about these cells here, the osteoblasts and osteoclasts that are driving that turnover of bone tissue. So we focus in on these cells, these cells here, the osteoclasts, the ones that resorb tissue, and the osteoblasts, the ones that we're starting to demonstrate and learn an awful lot more about, which I'm about to show you. So for many, many decades we've been using these histological techniques to understand how these cells behave inside bone tissue. So this is a very, very, very thin two-dimensional slice of bone tissue that demonstrates these cells that I've just been talking about. This is the bone tissue here in the middle that's pale pink. These are the osteocytes that are sitting in that matrix. We have these osteoclasts, which are stained here in red, which are those bone resorbing cells. And we see these square-shaped osteoblasts that are forming new bone. And this is obviously also surrounded by the bone marrow space where all those white blood cells live. Now for us to really understand how these cells behave, we've been able to develop techniques we've used for many years now where we take these cells out of this bone environment and we grow them in plastic. And this allows us to use these fluorescent labels or coloured labels that allow us to look inside single cells and see how they function specifically. And we've learnt an awful lot doing that. We can also grow these cells on artificial pieces of bone so we can watch, in this case here, an osteoclast you can see that it's been resorbing this piece of, piece of bone, so we can understand these processes. But as you can appreciate, these techniques are quite limiting. These uh, histology sections are only two-dimensional. It's only really static information. And when we look at these cells in plastic dishes, we've taken them out of their normal environment, so they're really lacking a lot of information. So we ask the question, what could imaging bone cells within living tissue teach us about their behaviour that's new? So that's what our team has been doing for the past few years. And we've developed using um, cutting edge technology here at Garvin, we've pioneered a technique that now allows us to see these cells behave inside living tissue for the first time. 
So what this image here demonstrates to you is it's a 3D image that shows this is outside the bone here and this is inside the bone marrow space on the top. So the blue is the bone surface or the bone tissue when we're imaging through that intact tissue into the bone marrow space. And we can label our osteoblasts with a green label. We can label our osteoclasts, those bone resorbing cells, with a red label. And we can now start to see, if I play this movie here, that these cells are actually interacting and talking to each other. So you can see these cells are moving. You can see this red cell here changing shape. And you watch as this cell changes shape, this osteoblast sitting next to it is also changing shape. So it appears to us from this these cells are communicating. And this is something we've never, never ever seen before. So for the past, past few years, we've been focusing in on looking at the osteoclasts and really starting to develop some new understanding of how these cells behave inside living tissue using this technique. And this image just shows to you how we can see on a large piece of bone all of these cells and where these red osteoclasts sit on, side, on, uh, on the surface of blue bone. We can see when we look closely that these cells are not just isolated cells, they're actually connected and possibly talking to each other, which again, we didn't appreciate this before with the techniques we had. And if you watch this movie here, this is a, an osteoclast in the middle here. You see it has these processes, or I guess they look like arms. They stretch out from the cell, which we didn't know these cells had inside living tissue. But you see the cell's really not doing much compared to these, hopefully you can see these little white blood cells or macrophages that are running around this cell in the bone marrow space. And they're touching that cell and scanning that cell. So we can now see the dynamics of these cells inside. So using those earlier techniques, where we took these osteoclasts out of the tissue and grew them in plastic, we've learned an awful lot about what controls these cell behaviour, and we know that these osteoclasts actually form through fusion. And fusion where two cells come together to form one and actually form a larger cell. So we now uh, have demonstrated using our imaging technique in living tissue, if you watch this movie here, these two osteoclasts, when we give this rank ligand or rankle that we know drives this process, we see them change shape very dramatically. And we can see as they change shape, those processes have retracted, they appear to form again, and then if you watch closely, they round up these two cells. They migrate towards each other and they actually do undergo fusion, which is what we knew these cells did, but this is the first time we're able to actually capture this inside living tissue. The other thing we know these cells do is that they actually die, go through apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. So once these cells are fused, they've resorbed some bone tissue when they're no longer needed, we understand that these cells then die. And we know what controls this, and we've been able to reduce this in our model. And if you watch this cell here in this white box at the bottom, again, this long, big osteoclast with those processes, you see that we've induced apoptosis, and it's really starting to change shape now. There's lots of those macrophages running around. But you see it really changing shape now. It kind of shrivels up, and then it breaks up into little pieces. And all of those macrophages and white blood cells come around and actually eat up the pieces that are left and that cell's gone. So again, now we're seeing this process for the first time inside living tissue. But really where this technology gets exciting is it's teaching us new biology. And that's what this is all about, is learning something new about these cells. So what we've now documented is that these osteoclasts not only undergo fusion, where they fuse together, they actually also undergo what we call fission, where they come apart from each other. So these cells form through fusion, but they can then break apart into smaller cells. So this movie here on your left demonstrates this long cell here. If you watch it closely, down the bottom here, this cell here is starting to change shape. It retracts up, and then you'll see this part here breaks up into smaller cells. And these smaller cells then actively move away from each other, as you can see here. So this is something that we didn't know these cells did, and this is the first time we've documented this inside living tissue, so we're learning some great new biology. But the last thing we've also learned is these cells not only undergo fission or, or fusion, so fuse together or pull apart, they actually undergo recycling. So what we're now seeing is these cells will undergo a, a cycle where they undergo fission, they break apart, but they then fuse with another cell. So this movie runs pretty quickly because it was captured over quite a long period of time. But if you watch closely here, this long cell here is breaking up. This cell here that's undergone fission then migrates over here and starts to fuse with this osteoclast. And this is a term that we've called osteoclast recycling. So there's a couple of other recycling events down here. These cells here were part of the cell. They've pulled apart, and then they actually refuse with that cell. So what we've documented here for the first time is a process of osteoclast recycling. And excuse the pun, but I feel that this could be something that's a lot better for the environment of the bone tissue 
than a cell fusing, resorbing bone, and then dying. So this is really an exciting finding. Okay, 10 minutes is up, we'll be very quick. So as I've shown you, this technology has allowed us to learn that bone cells are incredibly dynamic, they talk to each other, and instead of just dying when their job is done, we now know that osteoclasts can actually be recycled. So this live imaging has revealed really exciting new insights into bone cell biology. What does this mean to you? Well, we can use this new knowledge to better understand how current treatments for bone diseases, such as osteoporosis, really work. But more importantly, we can discover new biology that will help us better understand what causes bone diseases and also, as you'll hear later, how cancer's grow in bone. So ultimately, we can use this new knowledge to improve treatments for bone diseases. Thank you.